Okay, folks, I wanted to make a quick tutorial uh, that I couldn't find when it came to working with Passport.js. And probably the reason it didn't exist before is there's so many ways to work with Passport. But what I have is a Mern Stack app uh, that is BellevilleRunningClub.com. It is deployed to the internet and it is working with Google OAuth 2.0. And so I can hit slash auth slash google on my website i can authenticate using google and it's just going to spit back some some json data telling me about who has successfully logged in and so i couldn't figure out how to uh, find the tutorial uh, to, to have a bare minimum number of steps how to set this up with a mern stack application so i wanted to create that today uh, again, this is using Passport JS in a Mongo Express React in Node. Obviously, my React front end is not completely built out. This is a back end solution working with Express and Mongo database. Not only do I display this user on the page, but I also on my Mongo database save that user information in my Mongo user collection. Okay, so. Uh, bare minimum number of steps, here they are. Step one, you will need the right dependencies. So to go here, to go to the documentation uh, and look at all the strategies, I should say. Click on view strategies. I am using Passport with OAuth 2.0. And so this is gonna allow me to connect to Google. So here's my dependency. Of course, I will need, in addition to this, you need Passport. So you need passport dependency, which is this command here, All right? Of course, it's just npm i passport. So bring in passport as a dependency at your terminal, npm i passport. Then you're gonna bring in, once you bring in that dependency, you're gonna bring in OAuth 20. So bring that command in. Step two, bring in that command. Uh, step three, and uh, I already have this installed. Um, so needless to say, don't worry about that error message. Step three is to bring in express session. And this is gonna allow us to save our user into a cookie so that our session will persist even if they close the browser, uh, the user will stay logged in. So npm i express session. Those are the three dependencies. If I open up my package JSON, you will see these three dependencies um, that I'm working with. Now, everything else, the only other prerequisites I will say, you should be familiar with the .env package to store variables, environment variables in the .env file as I have here. And I'm also, I'm choosing to use MongoDB client um, um, package and so uh, I believe that's called the Mongo driver is what that's called uh, and I know there's other ways to connect into your MongoDB but I'm just using the Mongo driver as opposed to some of the other tools that are out there um, other than that uh, the code is not crazy complex okay you're gonna notice and I'm just gonna kind of bring in I'm gonna highlight the code that was specific to this. I bring in Passport. I bring in a Google strategy for Passport, okay? I bring in some database functions to save users to a database from a, from a database file. So this is like a custom, this is a file that I wrote, okay? These are bringing in some methods from the dependencies and the same thing here, this import session from Express Session, okay? So these are the imports. Now, once I boot up an express app variable, um, we are ready to configure Passport. And so there's a few things to configure Passport. The, the first thing when you do passport.use, you have to say two arguments. The first argument is you're using a Google strategy. In order to use a Google strategy, you need a client ID and a client secret. Now, you know what you should do at this point is go to your hosting provider of choice 
you know, mine was G Cloud, and I said how to get a Google client ID on G Cloud. Well, it turns out in order to get a client ID on G Cloud, here I'm on my cloud council, I had to go to my APIs, then I clicked on credentials, and I had to create credentials right here. And this allowed me to create an OAuth 2.0 client ID, and it came with basically a string that was my client ID and a string that was my password. Okay, so you have to configure this. Now, there's a couple of what I would consider to be confusing steps. Um, the first, and I'm taking this off the screen, is what are the URLs that I had to allow as authorized JavaScript origin? And so there's three. I'm just going to put this in Notepad. I have three URLs that I want to kind of talk about why I have each one of these threes on here. BellevilleRunningClub.com. Well, that's that's where the site ends up. That's pretty self-sufficient. Um, localhost 5000, that's my testing. That's my local environment. So I put both the live environment and my local environment as another authorized JavaScript origin. And here's the third that I add, added. Um, this is the URL the G Cloud gives me for my... Um, cloud run service and so I have a cloud run service that's hosted at this URL that basically redirects to BellevilleRunningClub.com so um, I put all three of these now the next section when you're creating this client ID is what are the redirect URLs or URIs okay it's the same three sites with this slash auth slash google slash callback okay and so i put all three of these in the authorized redirect uris okay and then i click on save and that's what i needed to create a client id and a client secret once i had a client id and a client secret let me clear this big red error message and get that terminal out of the way and kind of zoom in here Once I had a client ID and a secret, I saved those in environment variables and I accessed them out of my environment variables using process.env, okay? Now this callback URL is ultimately, this app URL is just www.bellevillerunningclub.com or, or not even w, it's just bellevillerunningclub.com, okay? So probably could have just kept that in the string, didn't really need to put that into a variable but I, I put it into a variable because I'm going back and forth between testing and live. Um, and so I change that variable from time to time. So that's my Google strategy. Get a client ID, get a client secret, callback URL is just a static URL. This, is, this URL, a callback, is the function that runs upon completion of authentication. So once a user authenticates, it's gonna send you to this route on the back end, slash auth, slash Google slash callback. Remember that because that's coming up. Now the second, the second argument here in my Google strategy is basically what happens when the user is successful. You can kind of see here, I, I run a little bit of simple if else. If the user already exists, we don't do anything. But if the user doesn't exist in my database, I call this add user function and saves my profile, the entire profile object into my database that is this right here again I, I can show if i were to delete this and re-authenticate if i delete this object delete kind of refresh it's gone i go back to bellvillerunningclub.com i re-authenticate right um, it will resave this user into my database upon a successful login and if i do it again you know it doesn't save the user over and over and over it just saves the user one time when the first time they authenticate so that's cool um so that's all this if else done uh if else does and then you can kind of see here at the end of this 
Google strategy, it says return done profile. That, that uh, more or less takes you to the next method um, in the middleware um, so that, you know, the, the passport strategy will then run this callback URL. So it's kind of where it goes next. Okay. Um, these two methods are what I consider to be boilerplate um, to help you write, serialize a user, save a user is the way you could think of this, save this user object into a session um, and read a user out of a session. Okay, so we're, we're using the serialized user and deserialized users of Passport in order to save user information into a session which is ultimately in that cookie. Um, to demonstrate this cookie, here I have a session ID, SID, that if I were to close this browser tab and open up Chrome and paste, okay, uh, the, the user is still logged in. I close the browser, I reopen the browser, user is still logged in because they're saved in session and saved in this cookie, that's what those lines of code help me do. Save the user in the session or read the user out of the session, um, you know, depending on whatever operation needs to be done. One more um, line of code to kind of get that session to work. When you're setting up a session, again, keeping in mind this comes from the express session dependency that we brought in, okay, this session is configured right here. And the important things here are that um, we're getting a session secret from our environment variables. Uh, recommendation there is just to have a long string that's not easily guessable or hackable. So just a long string of characters. Uh, resave it, save uninitialized, again, don't dive too deep into touching those, leave those the same. But here, this is the duration of your cookie, which is basically one hour. That's uh, 1,000 milliseconds times 60 seconds is one minute, times 60 minutes is one hour. So those three lines kind of help our sessions work. Then we run this initialize middleware app.use passport session, get everything up and running, and that's it for the middleware. The next section that of methods to write are for your routes. And so I'm looking here at line 72. This is the initial route. This is a back-end route that you might use something like um, uh, Axios, right, to call this URL uh, when the user clicks a button to authenticate with Google. Uh, so anyways, at some point, you're going to call this URL to kind of initialize uh, the Google Passport Authentication process. So when you navigate here on the back end, we call Passport Authenticate with Google. Um, you know, for my own learning and understanding, you know, I think there's some different options that might be worth checking out here. Um, because quite honestly, if I look at the information that's given to me, with this code, it's not a lot of useful information. You know, I got a username, I got a, like an ID coming from Google. Um, I've got like a profile picture that I can use, but there's not a lot there. I can't, I don't even have the user's email address. Okay, so I would experiment here uh, on this authenticate method, ways to see if Google can give me more useful information about about the user, you know, ideally I'm at least getting their email address because I don't have that right now the way this code is configured. So this triggers the authentication process and then it goes here on the back end route of auth Google callback. Again, this was the URL that the client ID asked for, right? It wanted to know that that back end route um, that that you need to navigate to after you trigger this authenticate method okay and here you've got two options like what do you do upon failure and what do you do upon success so here's the route 
what do you do on failure? And failure, I redirect to home. And then on success, I redirect to profile. Well, if you look at the slash profile route, slash profile, I say, hey, if the user is authenticated, then stringify the user data and put it into uh, a pre-tag and just display it on the page. Okay, so again, no front end built out for this just yet. Just got the back end working to work with Google Authentication. And basically, in the event that it works, it just puts the user information on the page. Otherwise, it redirects you to home. And then, of course, we want a little logic here to log out as well that destroys the session and clears the cookie and redirects home. Right, so a slash logout route as well. And that's what it takes. And so um, at a high level, I wanted to make a bare bones, what does it take to get Passport working with Google OAuth 2? And that's, that's what it took me to figure out. Hope you enjoy.